The Lord says this, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In the midst of all that is going on in the world, God says, don't fear. Don't fear. That's a challenge for most of us. Because the bill's got to be paid. The baby gets sick. What's going to happen in the election? Is there going to be another war? And on and on and on it goes. Doesn't really matter whose side you're on. It is what it is, and we got to live through it. But in the midst of it, the God of heaven says, don't fear. So I want to talk to you for a brief period of, if you will, some subject. Knowing God is the antidote for fear. See, if you really know God, it becomes the antidote that you don't have to worry about everything. Well, if you don't like that subject, well, you can say having faith if you that's better for you. It is still the antidote for fear. And if you're going to walk through this maze of circumstances and difficulties without fear, if you will, it has to be because you know something about your God. I got to know that he loves me no matter what. You got to know that he loves you no matter what. That's a given. Then I also need to know something about his character. That nothing that I'm going through is a surprise to him. Oh, come on, y'all. He knows all things. Not, not only that, he has power to change the situation. He is the almighty, all-knowing God. Okay? We talk about these words, uh, omnipotent, omniscient, and all of that. That's the idea. But whatever is going on, it doesn't surprise God. It's a surprise to me. It's a surprise to you. He already knows. So that's why I said we, we learn. I got to learn how to trust him. I got to walk by faith. I got to believe what he says is true, even though it makes no sense to me. Oh, come on now. Let's, that's just the way it is. So as we look at this passage here, and notice what he says here. It's just a two or three little things, but uh, when I see stuff like that, it just kind of excites me. <laughs> so I'm going to give you three reasons why the Lord says that we can be free from fear and dismay. And the first thing he says is, fear not, but I am with thee. His presence. Wherever I go, I'm not alone. Then he's promised that. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yea, I'll be with you always, even until the end. So whatever I'm going through, I got to know personally that he's with me. He has not abandoned me. Even in the darkness, I can't see my way and I'm feeling for things. Lord, I'm with you always. See, I got to know that I have his presence. The presence of the Lord, I am with thee. God himself. Isn't that basically what he told Moses? Who shall I say sent me? You tell him, I am. The ego Amy. I'm everything you need. I'm everything you need me to be. And see, when I get nervous, when I get a little shaky, when I start, my mind starts to wonder, what are they going to do up there in Washington next? Where? What's going to happen in the Middle East? We can get all shook up. And if you start shaking up like that, you forget. You, you're shaking down here, and you forget to, oh, come on now. You forget to raise your hands to the goodness of God. He's the one who brought you. He's the one who keeps you. And without him, we can do nothing. I have his presence. He is with me in the good times, in the bad times, when I can't see my way through. I got to know I'm not alone. He promised. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. 
We got to know that. So I have his presence. I am with thee. But then he says we have his relationship. I am thy God. Now wait a minute. If he's my God and he loves me and he's all-knowing, he's all power, and he's everywhere, and he's with me, would that bring me a little comfort? The word of God says, where can I go from your presence? If I go to the depths of hell, you're there. If I ascend to the heavens, you're there. If I go to the east or the west, ain't no way I can get run from you. And he's with me. He says, darkness is as day. Oh, you know, you know, we go out of town and do stuff, but he's there too. We can't hide from him. That, that's the good news. It, it uh, interested me, uh, what is that, uh, Psalm 137, I believe it is, where they say, down by the river of Babylon, they took us captive and all that. Israel is taken captive and they're whining. And they are being challenged by the enemy. Sang us one of the songs of Zion. And they said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Well, wait a minute. They forgot who God was. If he's God over there, he's God over here. I mean, when you're in danger, is that not the time to call on God? How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Ain't no strange land for God. He owns it all. He's everywhere. And sometimes we forget these things because we want to limit God and put him in this little box. Ain't no box big enough. Lord, I am with you, he says. We have his presence, and I am thy God. And see, because I am your God, I know what you need. I know how to fix what's going on with you. What do you think we were doing up here? Oh, come on, y'all. God was fixing some things. What the word of God says you have not. If we serve a God who's able, thanks, preachers, who can do all things, has all power, and he's on my side, why should I do without? Oh, come on, y'all. Why should we do without anything? My God shall supply. Not some things. All of my needs, not out of, but according to his riches and glory. Well, how rich is he? On the cattle on the thousand hill and the hills. All the gold is his. All the coal is his. All the silver is his. And I belong to him. Hallelujah. He says we have his presence. I am thy God. We have a personal relationship with him. See, when I begin to understand his character, his conduct, how he does things, what he expects, then I can expect something from him. I, the word of God said, I'm supposed to walk as he walked. He's the God who's on my side. In his presence, as fullness of joy. And he says, I have his presence. I am with thee. And then we have his relationship. I am thy God. Can I say that assuredly? You know, we sang this old hymn, and sometimes I just start preaching on it, but anyway. What a friend we have in Jesus. Really, you don't need anything else but that song. Really, you, you can preach that song all day. But the, the, the new version is I am a friend of God. And to me, you're saying, you know, kind of you're seeing that in a little different way. What a friend we have in Jesus when we talk about all that he's done for me. But when you say, I'm a friend of God, I'm making a declaration of how I feel about him. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Now I'm willing to say he's my God. I am his friend, and I'm willing to obey what he tells me to do. I'm willing to go where he tells me to go because I have a relationship with him. And I expect that he can take care of me wherever I go. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. 
The third thing he says here, this one is kind of broken up in three parts, really. We have his assurance. Do you see it there? His assurance. Kind of in threefold. He says we have his power. I will strengthen thee. Anybody need strength? Anybody get a little weak? The cares of this world kind of weigh you down. We all getting a little older here and the energy ain't what it used to be. Oh, come on, let's get real. But the Lord said, I will strengthen thee. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I love what he says over in Habakkuk chapter 3. There's a situation. He says uh, there's a drought in the land. Then, then they say there's no fruit. I'm paraphrasing, but it's basically what it says. There's no fruit on the vine. No cattle in the stall. And it's, it's something else there. But the idea is that there's a drought going on. And things are not what they normally should have been. But he says, yet I will praise the Lord. And as he begins to praise the Lord, the word of God says he began to straighten my, strengthen my legs. And he calls me to walk upon the high places. Places I never went before. Even when I was, had it all together, so to speak. But God strengthened my knees. The high places where the, uh, uh, the, the animal like the hind goes. The sure-footed. Normally, most other animals can't go there. But because God strengthened my knee and caused me, I didn't just do it. He caused me to walk upon the high places. Oh, what high places does he want you to reach? See, understand, there was a drought down here, but God says, I got some water up here. But you got to be willing to follow me. You got to be willing to trust me. You got to be willing to know who's on your side. I will strengthen thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The God of heaven says he wants to put his power in us. The idea he wants to fortify us in our weakness, in your difficulty. When there's opposition, the word of God has all of these meanings, and it can cause you to have the victory. Secondly, he says, I will assist you. Yea, I will help thee. You see it? I will help you. I don't know about you, but is there any better help than having the God of heaven on our side? God of power, the God of might, the God who knows all, the God who sees all, so I don't have to make the same mistakes that today that I made yesterday. Anybody need direction? Anybody need guidance? See what's going to happen in the future? How much do we know? Very little. How many times you said, if I knew all this traffic was here, I would have gone the other way. Especially right along and now, they're fixing the roads. Everywhere you go, there's a traffic jam. If I had known that, I would have gone the other way. Oh, wait a he knew that. Oh, come on, y'all. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? <laughs> see, see, the God of heaven wants to guide me. He wants to direct me. But I also got to have the good sense to follow when he tells me to go the other way. Pastor Cook said there's a whole bunch of stuff we don't know. But if God spoke it, I don't know why I'm going this way, but I just feel like I'm going this way. I think I told somebody already. I didn't plan to come here this morning. I didn't have anywhere to go this morning. I'm usually preaching somewhere. But the point is, I didn't have no place to go this morning. I said, well, I'm going to go up to Vandalia. I got to the road. It was like, don't go to Vandalia. Go up to Brother Cooks. So here I am. But I'm just saying, I don't know why. See, you don't have to know everything. But if the Spirit of God leads you to do something different, just follow him. It'll be all right. He says, yay. I want to assist you. Yeah, I will help thee. 
I'll give you guidance. I'll give you direction. I'll give you protection. We need all of that. For victory, and when it comes, don't take the credit for it. Give it to him. Amen. The third thing he says, I will support thee. Wow, support from God. Now, if you get some support from God, I mean, that ought to be pretty much an assurance that you ought to be on the winning side. Right? You know anybody stronger? You know anybody with more power? We're winners. See, that's why we sang this song, Go Victory in My Savior. How long? What did he do? He sought me. He bought me. He redeemed me. He washed me. He cleansed me. That's why you got victory. We don't have to be in defeat. The enemy wants you down. He wants you doubting. He wants you in discouragement. He wants you feared. He wants you shaking all over, worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. And the God of heaven says, fear not. I'm with you. I fought for you before, didn't I? I brought you out of Egypt, didn't I? I got you across the Red Sea, didn't I? I got you through the Jordan, didn't I? Why are you fearing now? We are a forgetful people. I love what Peter says. I, Peter says, I don't come to give you anything new. <laughs> I come to remind you what you already know. <laughs> I mean, it's in the book. He says that. Is that not us? God does a victory yesterday and we forget. But well, he's the same God today. I am the Lord and I change not. What I did for you yesterday, I can do again today. What I did for your mama, I can do today. But we forget. We need to be reminded how great our God is. And he says, I will support you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. See, this talks about God's faithfulness and fulfilling his promise. With all of the mistakes that Israel made, all of that disobedience, he still fulfilled the promise that he made to Abraham. But gee, we can't be much more disobedient than they were. Oh, come on, y'all. And he still brought them. God is faithful. The word of God declares that faithful is he who called us, who's also able to bring it to pass. Yes, we need to cooperate with him. But God can get it done. He can get it done. If I can't get a man to do it, I hey, I'll, I'll send my son to do it. Did he not? What was Israel's task? To be a testimony to the world, wasn't it? Wasn't that what it was supposed to be? A testimony to God's goodness and win the world? Then you had some prophets like Jonah. Y'all don't want to go there. <laughs> had his own agenda. And then after they got saved, remember what he said? I knew God would save him. See, I didn't want to preach this stuff because God would save him. I want to keep this God to myself. We all get selfish, self-centered. It ain't about you. It's about him. If I be lifted up, he says, I'll do the drawing. I'll draw all men, all ethnicity unto me. I am the Lord and I change not. Remember, for God so loved the, not just Israel. That's why the Jews were totally shook up when the Jesus prays his prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. They had never heard it that way. They had never heard it that way. You want everybody to pray that prayer? The God, we've been talking about it was just for us. Oh, God's bigger than us. He's bigger than the Pentecostal. He's bigger than the Baptist. He's bigger than the Methodist. And we get hung up on that stuff. 
God says, wait a minute. My blood was shed for all. And he says, you don't have to fear. See, fear will stop you from raising your hands. Fear will stop you from giving God the glory. Fear will stop you from giving God the praise. Fear will stop you from hanging out with folk of, not of your denomination. See, I've been through all this stuff. I've been through all this stuff. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> when I first started preaching, they, they kind of put a black ball on me because I was going to other churches. You, you got to be kidding. Well, I was a singer. And before I started preaching, just going to other churches singing. Well, I guess you would call it uh, superintendent kind of a thing. Well, Mac Knight going to all these other churches saying, well, then when I got called to preach, well, so don't call him. This is still 30 years ago. Don't really matter. I'm probably preaching almost every denomination around here. And I'm still preaching. No, all I'm saying is God. All I'm saying, God is bigger than the Baptist. God is bigger than the Nazarene. But we get hung up on this when we ought to let God be God. Okay? See, see I, I love the scripture, Brother Cook, where he says, iron sharpens iron. See, I don't have to agree with everything you do, everything I, you say, but if I hang around you, we can both get sharper. I like to say it like this, kind of like sandpaper. Get the rough edges off. Oh, come on, really? It does. And God can be God. We need to give him the freedom to do what he wants to do. See, he wants to do some stuff in me, and he wants to do some stuff in you. But when we put him in this little box, I'm afraid to go out of this little thing here, sometimes because what other folk going to say because they won't allow me to come in their churches because you've been over here. Let me believe in you. Like I said, I've seen all this stuff. But I've still seen God bless. If we're going to be a blessing to the body, we got to put away some of this fear. Because men can keep you in bondage in fear. God wants us free to be who he called us to be, where he called us to be, and do what he called us to do wherever he called us to do it. Oh, anybody believe that? You know, the Lord says we are to have the freedom that only comes from him. As though him in the church we sang, when peace, like a river. Y'all know that song? But do you really get what that song is saying? That song says, when peace, like a river, river, this size, attendeth my way. But sorrows, like sea, billows roll. The sorrows, twice the size, a river. But whatever my lot, my circumstances, what I'm going through, who I'm surrounded by, whatever my situation, you taught me to say, it's well. It's well with my soul. I'm not going to allow fear. I'm not going to allow anxiety. I'm not going to allow the lies of somebody else to stop me from doing and being who you call me to be. Now notice. The sea is twice as large as the river. So we are speaking faith and standing on faith in the midst of the circumstances. Is that, y'all get that from that song? See, sometimes we sing these songs, but we don't pay attention to what we're saying. 
when peace like a river attended my way, sorrow, you said, even in the midst of an overwhelming circumstances, say this, it's well. It's well with my soul. It doesn't look like it's well. In the natural, I'm defeated because the sea is two times the size of the river. But just because God says it's well, I'm going to stand on what he says. See, we say these words. We walk by faith and not by sight. Well, wait a minute. Faith is believing what God says is true. Isn't it? That's what faith is. Believing what God says is true. Wake up, y'all. Hey, it's believing that it is so, when, even when it's not so, simply because it might be so. Now notice what faith is. Faith is believing that it is so, even when it's not so. In order that it might be so, simply because God said so. That's what it is. But it's like, I'm walking this peace like a river. I'm satisfied. But this big ball of sorrow comes down. It overwhelms me. It steals my peace. It steals my joy. That's what it wants to do, right? It will cause me to fear. Shaking all over. But I got to say it's well. It is well. It's well with my soul. And it's well with my soul because God said it's well with my soul. Because he's the one who saved me. He's the one who delivered me. He's the one who put his word in my mouth. Even praise to our God. I don't know what you're going through, but I know my God is able. He wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could have asked or think. Brother, pray that last song for me. Whatever you're going through, he's the same. What if you're going through, he can change it for you. He will do it for you. You don't have to fear what any man will do to you. We got victory in the name of Jesus.